it was a show that had to work for everybody. It had to work for the WB. It had to work for Warner Brothers. Um, it had to work for DC Comics. And, you know, it, so that there was a lot of, there was definitely a lot of pressure. And I, and, you know, the first, you know, the first two seasons, we wrote every episode. You know, there are names aren't on every episode, but we wrote every episode because, you know, you're trying to certainly figure out the show and what's what works and what doesn't. So I think in season one, you know, we probably broke 44 stories to get 22 episodes. You were very much responsible for even just getting them to have someone pick me up. You got the cast together to sign oh my a waiver. Gosh, yeah. Like that, well, that were, just seems were, like driving all the way out to Alderbro. Yeah, I remember we did that. We, we wrote a letter. Remember, Schneider, you, you uh, spearheaded yeah. the whole thing. What's crazy is I remember it was the WB was always, what are the teenage things Clark can do with? What are the teenage things he gets involved with that aren't so he's goody two shoes? And yeah. what what fun can he have with his superpowers? It's wish fulfillment elements. Yeah. So so it's like, how do we get those in? And then my, my favorite, though, is like Lex shows up with fireworks. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's been an and ongoing theme on regarding what is Lex doing at this party? It's a high school yeah. party. Hey, you just want to throw some fireworks. I talked to the cops. Everything's okay. Everything's just lurking great. around. I love that. Your dad Sometimes. would drive you to work. Yeah, because I don't know if you remember, but transport uh, wasn't allowed to drive me. And I didn't have a car. So, so I would take the bus to work. And then I got a stalker. And then they wouldn't let me take the bus to work. But they wouldn't drive me. It Why? was just... You didn't want your stalker to give you a ride? He was always there outside. <laughs> Jeez, Tom, low. Uh, but wait, so you had a stalker in season one. I, I vaguely remember that. Season one or season two. It was early on anyway. And um, and then we got our security. Did he ever show up to set? I don't think so. No. Thank God. Was Other there... people showed up to set. Did they send security to your house or... No, we got security on set. On set, yeah. On, in part because of that. Yeah, I remember them being like, oh, you know, this is a big cost to production. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. so is us like getting killed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you one, one more funny story. And this was, so speaking of just over budget and things, so the show premieres, it's a, it's a huge hit out of the gate, like to the point where we didn't understand the numbers and somebody from the WB had to explain it. So they, everybody kind of backed off and we were able to frankly finish jitters and do these things because in the words of Peter Roth, nothing's cheaper than a hit. So we, we go in and this is about the time we're doing, I think it was episode 13, it was Leech, which was another <laughs> massive episode. I just, cars and roofs, I'm crazy. And we're with Peter and it was kind of like, <laughs> It was a, we have to get the boys. We got to rein it in, right? So Peter sits there with the CFO and he goes, I am not giving you a blank check. This is not a blank check. But spend what you need to spend to make the show great. That is not a blank check. <laughs> <laughs> and the CFO's face was just like, holy uh, This was a very valuable asset that Warner Brothers had. And it was doing really, really well. And the folks in the folks in production, their job is to not spend as little, but be as frugal as they can be. And then they report back to the folks in uh, in California. So there was a disconnect there. 